I have printed out my description box from my March favorites in 2017, and we are gonna go through them all and see if they are still favorites, and if they are not, what has taken their place. So first thing I had mentioned as a favorite back in 2017 was the Maybelline Dream Cushion Foundation. And I put it on this morning to kind of replicate my makeup from two years ago. And I literally, it, this is down to the last drags. I had to take the pad out and just smash it on my face. There's nothing left. So this is going in empties. Um, I was a shade 10, 10 or 15 is about my shade right now. I haven't repurchased it since then, but mostly because of what I do, I'm always testing new stuff out. However, if I want to grab um, a quick foundation, especially in summer and when it gets warm, I like the cushion foundations, I would definitely repurchase this. Um, as you can see, how, by the way I'm dressed, I'm currently freezing, so I'm not really thinking about warm weather makeup just yet, but this would definitely be a repurchase, so I will say it is still a favorite. Another favorite from March of 2017 was the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer, and I think this is the second one since then. I know I purchased them twice, I just can't remember if I've repurchased it since then. This is the original shade, it's not light, dark, or whatever, it's just the butter bronzer. I'm wearing it again today. Even two years later, it still has that coconut suntan oil smell. Um, I would definitely repurchase this. It's still a favorite. I still, it's in the bronzer rotation. I do want to pick up the darker one because this is on me in my fairest of fairs. This is how much it shows up, which isn't, I mean, I layered it. So I would probably pick up the darker one if I fake tan or even get a little just naturally more tan. It's still definitely a favorite though. Sticking with the Physicians Formula, back in 2017, their Butter Blush in Natural Glow. I'm trying to open it for you. Uh, I was a huge fan. I'm wearing it today. It's very, very subtle glow. I still love the blush, so much so that I went on to purchase Rosy Pink, which I definitely prefer over the Natural Glow, and also Plum Rose. I really, really like this one as well. So I like those two shades a little bit more than the natural glow. I still think the packaging is ridiculous. It's too much, it's too much packaging. Like they could do a little bit better with a more sleeker design, but they are not taking design advice from me. A new to me drugstore blush that I really, really enjoy is the um, powder blush from Milani that's shaped like pressed into a flower. This is the um, Blossom Time Rose shade, and it has a similar glowy effect. It's not as creamy on the skin, so if you're oily skinned, you might like this a little bit better if you want the glowy effect without the creaminess on the cheeks. Okay, my hair is not a favorite today. I just tried to straighten it and it's... Anyway, so a favorite from March 2017 was the Flower Beauty Highlighting Palette, and it's still a favorite. Look at how beautiful those shades are. I am wearing this one as a highlighter today. Bam, cheeks, right? Definitely still love this, definitely a huge favorite, but I've gone on to purchase another Flower Beauty highlighting palette that also has a bronzer and a blush in it that I reach for more, um, which is this one. And I, I just find that on this palette, I just tend to reach for the same highlighter over and over. So if you're not the kind of person who needs a whole bunch of different color highlighters and you want a little more efficient design for your makeup collection, I would advise Checking out this one. I like it a lot. Another favorite from the Flower Beauty Collection in 2017 and still a huge favorite is their um, Shimmer and Shade Eyeshadow Palette in the um, shade Golden Natural, which is what I have on right now. It's just, it's a really nice bronzy undertone, a lot of metallic. There's definitely some mattes in there too. I'm wearing it right now. I loved it so much. I went back, whoops, I went back and picked up the Warm Natural. That was Golden Natural. This is Warm Natural. And I'm sorry to say, never reach for it. I feel like this is not warm at all. It's definitely cool toned. Um, there's a little bit warm down here, but I just haven't played with it as much. I, I'm just not as into purples maybe as I should be. So never say never, I still keep it around. Hopefully I will play with it at some point. Then I hopped around, left makeup to um, an Instagram account. And her name is Jen, and her Instagram account that I was in love with in March of 2017 was Budiction. But since then, and I'm still a huge fan, and since then Jen has gone on to start her own YouTube channel, which I really, really enjoy, because it's so much more fun to hear her and 
see her playing with all the stuff. So if you are not yet subscribed to Jen on Budiction, I will link it and put it in the description box and you really need to go visit. She knows her stuff. She is big on drugstore makeup, especially affordable makeup. And um, I think you all love her. So go check out her channel. I'm that's She is still a favorite. Then I jumped back into makeup in my March favorites and I talked about this Milk Makeup Eye Pigment. There were two shades in particular, Hotel Lobby and Gig. I still have Gig, it's in a drawer. Um, this is Hotel Lobby and it's literally a squeezy tube of a cream eyeshadow. It's a real, I'm, I'm okay, I'll swatch it. I was like, I don't want to. Cause it does have great staying power. And there it is, nice sheen. And there's a huge color range. So I mean, if you want really deep or bright pigments, they have them. But what I have reached for over and over and bought two of instead that I find myself not utilizing the Milk Makeup are the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize. Um, in particular, I feel like a broken record. I feel like I talk about it all the time. Jean, which has a little bit of a golden sheen, very similar. And Marie Antoinette, which is more of a bronzy shade. Also very light though. And the reason I reach for these more is because I feel like I can place them more precisely on my eye. I feel like no matter how little I squeeze out, there's always some wasted, it's a little more messy. It's not a, a liquid, but it moves around a little more on the lid than the cream shadows, even though they both dry down. And so I just feel like I can get more control with the Charlotte Tilbury ones. So I haven't really reached for this since I started getting more into the cream eyeshadows. Another favorite from March 2017 that I totally forgot about, which is why I'm really glad I do these videos because it's not just to catch up and see where things have gone, but it also refreshes my memory. Like, oh, you have this in your collection and you forgot? This is the L'Oreal Infallible Paints, Lip Paints in the shade Spicy Blush. I have it on today. It's beautiful. I really love the squeezy tube. I love the doe foot applicator. I'm gonna put some more on. I don't need to, but. It has great staying power for a gloss type product. It's not gloss and then it's sheer, it's definitely opaque. It, it feels more like melted lipstick. It's that kind of consistency. I don't know why I forgot about it. So back it goes into my, I'm not putting this, I have a little bag here for my things I'm talking about. I'm gonna keep this out and put it right back into my purse. It is beautiful. Okay, then I talked about the Zoya Nail Polish Charming Collection. So right around early March, late February, Zoya always releases their spring collection. They have also released another one this year. It's a perennial favorite. Their spring collections are probably my most favorite out of all their collections. Of course, I went and put all the polishes into my collection, my collection, sorted by color, so I can't find all the individual ones. I'll put them below here. But then I started using another brand this month that I think I need to mention since it's what's on my fingers. The brand is London Town and it's their lacquer nail polish. This is the shade Afternoon Tea. Um, which I mentioned earlier. And then they also sent, and they sent it to me. And then I also got Briolette, which is very similar, but it's more lavender than pink. And this is what's going on my nails. Next time I go to the uh, nail salon, I still love Zoya, but I, I'm enjoying, I they don't have a color quite like this, this opaqueness. And I haven't seen one with this bright of a lavender shade either. So sometimes it's fun to try other brands too. Back in March of 2017, I really liked the Milani, um, what was it called? the Lux Lip Treatment, the Keep It Smooth, it's a lip balm, and I still love it. Um, it was in a pot, I don't have it anymore, I used it all up, I scraped the inside of it, and that was part of the problem, I don't love the pot delivery as much. Then I got this, this is my second one. This is the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Lip Treatment, and whatever, it, it looks like it's in an eyeshadow pan, and it's really thin and easy to get your finger in, and stays shut in your purse, and because it's not, you know, liquid, I can travel with this and not worry about TSA confiscating it. So this is my second one. I've hit pan on this one as well. It is also extremely hydrating. Um, I love it. What can I say? It's going to be a perennial favorite, I think. Okay, we are leaving the world of cosmetics and we're going into random other things. So this makes me giggle. Okay, back in 2017, I listed a floral kimono type robe as one of my favorites and it still would be if Rowdy, my wine runner, had not eaten it. Yeah, he chewed through the sash and a little bit more of it. I don't know why, I have no idea why. Like there's, there weren't treats in it, there was nothing that would make it smell like something you would wanna eat, I, I don't know. Anyway, it is gone, but I think right after that, maybe, I got this for Mother's Day. It's a kimono type robe, which you can't really see, so I'll try to insert a picture from Soma. 
and I actually kind of worked out well. I like it better because it's a little longer. It's opaque in the fabric. It's like that microfiber, really soft. So it's cozy and yet lightweight. So you can wear it in the warmer months. Um, so thanks Rowdy. Cause I upgraded my robe and I appreciate that. Another favorite from 2017 were the Sperry Seaside sneakers. I got them, I think in gray first, and then I went on to purchase them in Navy and in black and they're still in my closet. Um, I'm kind of looking to branch out. So last year during the Nordstrom anniversary sale, I got the Caslon wedge sneakers and they're a slip on, but they have a little heel to them and I love them. They're my most worn shoe. Of course they don't carry them anymore. Then they came out with another one that wasn't, that, that was more of like a high top. This is a little bit shorter, like a normal, but still with a hidden wedge. They sold out of that one too. So I'm kind of on the hunt for a new pair of sneakers. And I also just want a classic pair of Adidas, like either all white or with the rose gold stripe. So I don't have a current sneaker that doesn't look like a like an athletic shoe favorite. Um, I do have just the regular Adidas like workout shoe in black that I love, but I'm looking for like a white leather or blush toned sneaker, but more walking shoe. I don't know. So the search continues. I don't have a current favorite. Next on the list was the Dolce Vita slide sandal. I have it. Haven't really worn it since that season. So like I said, it's freezing right now and the weather is supposed to start warming up in the next couple of weeks. And I have it on my list of things to do to start looking for new summer shoes. Um, I recently purchased the Treasure and Bond Sanibel wedge sandal in gray, which you've seen before. And I love it so much. I kind of want to buy them in other colors, but then at the same time, like, do I really need the same shoe? Should I try to diversify? So I'd love to get your input. Would you rather see me showing you different colors of the same shoe when I do my outfits of the day? Or do you think a shoe haul is in order and I should spread the love to different brands, different styles? Let me know. Okay, next were the Kendra Scott Sophia earrings, which are still a huge favorite. Again, probably one of my top five most worn earrings. Oftentimes when I travel, these are the only ones that I bring. I just feel like they're delicate enough that they can go with anything, but they're big enough that you can see them um, a little bit bigger, you know, than like a stud or something. So that is what is going on here. And then I had two books that I recommended. The first was the um, In Death Mystery Series by J.D. Robb, who that's a pseudonym for Nora Roberts. It's still a favorite. Um, I think it was late January, early February. The latest one came out. I will link that below. There are about 50 some odd books in this series. So if you need a series to start working your way through, that's the one for you. Then there were the Kim Harrison Hollows series. Um, that series is now done and it's pretty, it's not, there's not 50 books, but there's quite a few books in that series. It's a paranormal kind of mystery series set in sort of post-apocalyptic time, fairly present day, but there's vampires and witches and Anyway, if you like that sort of thing, you will really, really enjoy her books. And then the third series was pretty much, I think, a Kindle only type series. I don't know if this is published in a in another version. And it's the Donna Ball, uh, Rain, Donna Ball's the author, Rain Stockton series. And since then, I think at least two more books have come out. I've been keeping up with that series. And that series is has nothing to do with the other two. It's, um, it's a mystery series, so that's the only thing they have in common. The main character is a dog owner. She owns a kennel and training company and her, the other main character is her search and rescue dog. So if you're into dogs, you might like that. And then the last favorite from March, 2017, which would still be a favorite if they hadn't discontinued it, was from the Glade, you know, Glade Candles, Glade plug-in people. And it was their number four tempted candle. It was an amber scented candle. It was from a, like, I guess, limited edition and uh, series and it's gone. It was so good, why? I think the candle might still be available, but then, the coordinating plugins and other room sprays are no longer available, something like that. So if I can find, there's one of them is still available on Amazon, but the one I was looking for, which I think is the plugin, is not. I will link below it's available because if you're an amber scented person, amber scented loving person, I should say, you will really, really enjoy um, that scent. Maybe we should all just write to Glade. Can you please bring that scent back? Um, thank you so much. That is the wrap up from all my favorites from March of 2017. If I'm like squinting and blinking funny, I am in the middle, like it just started kind of right as I hit record of a killer migraine that has just come on and my eyes suddenly just feel really, really heavy. So sorry about that. That's what happens when allergy season kicks in. 
in San Antonio. The headaches kick in as well. But anyway, thank you for bearing with me and my squinty eyes. <laughs> now that's all I can do is squint. Um, I hope y'all are feeling well. Thank you so much for revisiting my favorites. Let me know if you're here in March of 2017 and if any of your favorites are still around. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.